understanding all the different types of power kite can give you a headache. As a result, many people do wind up using the wrong type of kite for their style of kiting. To help you avoid this, I'm going to explain the fundamentals of some different kite shapes, and I'm going to look at what choices you can make when you get started in the sport. The primary difference between kite shapes is the arc of the kite. You can get kites that are very arced along the leading edge and have large amounts of canopy down the sides near the wingtips. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you get kites that are flatter along the leading edge with minimal canopy down the sides and the majority of the canopy facing back towards the rider. Arced kites are generally called C-shaped and less arced kites can be described as flat. The flatter a kite, the more it needs a bridle. The bridle holds the wing in its flattened shape. Without the bridle, the kite would start to bulge out in the middle from the force of the wind. As well as holding the kite's shape, a bridle hinges the leading edge. This allows the kite to pivot and quickly change angle just by moving the bar. Both flat and C-shaped kites can make use of a bridle in this way. A pure C-kite, however, doesn't need a bridle to provide structure. It can fly with two center lines and two steering lines connected on the corners. So what are the practical differences between flat and C-shaped kites? We can learn a lot by looking at the forces when you move the bar in and out. With a flat kite, when you pull in the bar, the kite angles away from you. Because the kite is so flat, the forces across the wing act away from the rider. This generates lots of extra pull simply by pulling in the bar. Conversely, when you push the bar out, the kite pivots and aligns with the wind. The aerodynamic forces are hugely reduced simply by pushing the bar away. The original sea kites were a very different beast. As you move the bar in or out, it's only a smaller central section that angles towards you or away from you. You get less power from pulling in the bar, and you get less depower by pushing out the bar. Basically, a good flat kite gives you far more control over its force, so you get more depower, more safety, much more wind range. This also means that flat kites are easier to jump with and provide longer hang time. The extra rider facing canopy provides lift at the edge of the window. A flat kite feels a bit like a glider to jump with, whereas a sea kite rips you up as it crosses the window, but then it drops you as the kite reaches low power. But having large side sections on the kite does have a purpose. The lateral forces give the kite lateral stability. Basically, side panels stop a kite from dropping to the side. Even if all the lines go slack, a good C-style kite should drift back into place happily. So, there are huge differences between flat kites and sea kites. It is worth noting that in practice, most kites sold are not at the extremes of the sea flat spectrum. If you built a kite that was completely flat, it would be very hard to keep in the air. Equally, the basic sea kite with four simple connections is not common either due to the limited power control and wind range. Another important characteristic of a kite is its aspect ratio. Simply put, aspect ratio is a measure of how skinny or stubby a wing is. High aspect means long and skinny. Low aspect means short and stubby. Stubby, low aspect wings are very easy to rotate. A compact shape is easier to spin. Therefore, a good low aspect kite should be able to turn on the spot, which also means it relaunches easily. A long skinny kite takes more effort to turn. We can learn a lot more about the differences between low and high aspect ratio by looking at the pull of these kites. At low angles of attack, the high aspect wing increases pull sharply. 
whereas the low aspect kite increases pull a bit more smoothly. This means high aspect kites can deliver a bit more performance and more power close to the edge of the window. That means they can help you power up wind and they also glide further after jumps. In light wind, however, it's much easier for a high aspect ratio kite to reach the back stalling point. With the low aspect ratio kite, you have to reach a much higher angle of attack before you lose power and backstall. This smoother change in pull and stall resistance makes low aspect kites very forgiving. During gusts, for example, a low aspect kite behaves itself, while the high aspect kite feels like it's kicking you in the back. In summary, a good low aspect kite should be user friendly, fast turning, fast relaunching and extremely stable. A good high aspect kite offers more performance, less drag and more power across the window. So, kites have different aspect ratios and they also have different arcs. Within this space you find a selection of different kites for different purposes. If you're a typical beginner, having just finished lessons, you want a kite that's slightly on the flatter side. This gives great power control at the bar and plenty of stability. You also want about a medium aspect ratio. Since, as a beginner, you want the ease of use and relaunch from low aspect ratio, but equally you need the upwind performance of high aspect ratio. If the feeling of flight is your main reason for learning to kite, then you can go a bit higher aspect ratio and a bit flatter. The Rebel gives more performance and power control, making it a flying machine although it might not feel as easy to use as an Evo at first. But because it has enormous D power, it's still a sensible type of kite for new kiters who aim to fly one day. What would be a bad choice for beginners, however, is to go for a fully arced sea kite. The Vegas sea kite is not built for D power or beginners. On top of that, the Vegas also has a high aspect ratio giving it a bit more brutality. It's designed for serious or competitive kiters who want scary kite loops or fully powered unhooking. If you're new to kiting but definitely plan to get into unhooking, then there is a more user-friendly C-style kite. Being a little flatter and having a bridle for pivot means the dice gives more power control and more range but it still has the drifting, slacking and unhooking ability of a sea kite. Surprisingly, one of the most forgiving kites is actually quite arced. The Neo's chunky corners help it drift while depowered. These chunky corners combined with a lower aspect ratio means it turns on the spot and relaunches easily. Probably the closest thing to a foolproof kite that I've ever found. It's really hard to make mistakes with it or stall it and the bridle pivots the whole kite so rapidly it's actually a safe option for a first kite for someone who mainly wants to use a directional board. When looking for a kite, there are a few common terms that you're going to hear a lot. You've probably guessed that a kite that sits in the middle of all this is known as a hybrid. This hybrid zone is very popular because many kiters enjoy mixing up their styles of kiting. They don't want to do the same thing every day. Another term you'll hear a lot is bow shaped or bow kite. This is generally used to describe a kite on the flatter side of the spectrum. However, bow shape actually means a kite that has a concave trailing edge that starts to look a bit like a bow. As it happens, many super flat kites do have swept back wingtips for leverage, so the terms flat and bow are linked but you can get very flat kites that are not bow shaped at all. So the term bow is not always that informative. The term delta is generally used to describe a hybrid kite. Delta kite, however, simply means the canopy is roughly triangular from the rider's perspective. 
It looks vaguely like a Greek letter Delta or a Delta Wing aircraft. The concept was to start with a sea kite for the lateral stability of the side panels, but then enlarge the central canopy since this part gives power control at the bar. The result is a hybrid of kite properties. But you can extend the central canopy on a flat kite, or you can extend the central canopy on a sea kite, which means you can get delta shaped canopies that are completely different from each other, which is why the term delta is sometimes misleading. I hope this video helps you find your ideal kite and helps you avoid the wrong one. I wish this information had been around when I started kiting because I definitely used the wrong type of kite for my first few seasons at least. If you have any questions about kite shapes that I haven't answered, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and safe kiting to all of you.